Welcome back to the LEC 2023 Winter Split. My name is Quickshot. I'm joined by Dagda at the Casa Desk for the next three games, potentially four if we get a tiebreaker. A uh, quick little note, during the previous segment, I think we didn't fully update the standings graphics. So I want to just reiterate and remind everybody what the league looks like with three official games left to play. So SK, Vitality, and G2 all sitting towards the top of the table at six and two. For this game though, when you look at Fnatic at two and six, it's simple. If they win this game, they will face Astralis in a tiebreaker for that eighth and final spot in the group stage. If they lose this game, Fnatic are eliminated and Astralis will advance. On the upside though, SK, if they can pick up a win, they're still in the running to pick up that second place spot, depending on if Vitality win their game at the end of the day. So, I mean, a lot of the line for both teams, I mean, for SK, trying to show that they can compete at the top of the table, whereas Fnatic proving that, well, maybe they can skirt in again into a playoff or a group stage situation. There is a lot to live up to here for Fnatic, for the expectations of the organization. Also, for the first time ever, Fnatic are really, really, really close to not advancing to that bracket stage, to that best of stage. And it's still mind boggling to me that SK are legitimately within touching distance of a pool one seed, a top two position in the regular season. Let's find out what happens as we jump into picks and bands. Ash, Rise, Lucian already banned. I'm anticipating the likes of Caitlyn. That's something that we've seen time and time again from this Fnatic roster. Yeah, Fnatic have been putting a lot of those bands towards the bottom side of the map and Lucian gone, Caitlyn you seem to go. Heimerdinger also pretty high up if you want to go towards that, but the cat going to be taken off the board as well. And SK sticking with her true and tested one as well. 100% ban race still there on that rise. Yeah, definitely don't want to play that particular champion. But that means the priority picks are pivoting a little bit here. The Maokai will be the final ban. Caitlyn is still open. Zeri is still open. Uh, trying to think through some of the Varus other... is the other big one as well. So I think a Varus pick is probably what we're going to see Exit Kick go for. Um, unless they actually want to try and trade it with the Caitlyn. It hasn't been something that Exit Kick has picked up just yet. He has seen a, at least one game onto the Varus, but now we're going to have to look across to see what Fnatic want to do. Reckless has tended back towards the Varus, but I think there's been a bit of a mix match between what Reckless wants to play and what Rooks wants to play. They're going back towards these engaged champions like the Nautilus and Leona for Rooks, but you don't always want to pair that with something like the Varus. I'm very intrigued to see See what happens with this Caitlyn pick and whether or not either team will pick it up. I mean, Exekick only has four games of his 200 odd professional career on the champion and Reckless will now secure the Zaya comboed with the uh, Wukong there for Razok. So some answers already into that Sejuani engage and for SK, what direction do they take this draft? You would anticipate bot lane and leave some of those solo lanes for phase two. But they are taking their time to think about it. Yeah, I'm wondering if they do just go for the Heimerdinger and the Varus. I mean, you got a good push there. You can actually put a, a lot of problems into the Zaya, but it's actually going to be the Caitlyn that they go for. So, same idea. Zaya, incredibly short range. So, being able to use that range advantage as the Caitlyn to get in, take a few pop shots, push them out, make sure you're getting turrets. And this is now going to be a very difficult one for Fnatic. I think you have to go towards some sort of hard engage support here because you need to try and make sure that you can actually close the distance, get help from Razork and shut down Exekick and DOS before they get rolling. I mean, that is Rux's comfort. I mean, Thresh, Leona, Rakan, Alistair, Nautilus, those are all these top five, top six most played champions. The thing is, you then have to ensure you find those engages and you don't get bullied off the map. For SK, I think a little bit of execution required for this Caitlyn Lux lane to truly get the value. And this is where I want to see how they try and mi match their mid lane here. Because a lot of the times when you have these hyper pushing bot lanes, you need something that has control over the mid lane. Because if you end up with something like a Rise or a Galley or anything that can come down and make things awkward for the Caitlyn Lux, that's not really a position that you want to be in. So I wouldn't be surprised if SK tried to take something like an Azir in the mid lane where they're just like, cool, we can just keep pushing mid, make sure that Humanoid can't have any pressure in this bottom side. And then it just comes down to the 2v2 to the 3v3 or maybe a bit of a mismatch if Sertus can make his way down to that bot side as well. Oh, so much pressure then, especially for Reckless and Rux who have really had a tough time throughout the course of this win split. Now, to be fair, the entire Fnatic roster has, but when you contrast the expectations and the performance 
of this duo versus so many others here in the league, including Exekick and Das, who have found a rhythm over the last couple of games. And I think that's partly because Exekick and Das have also just stepped up massively in the 2v2, getting a bunch of duo kills. But the fact that Mark Kuhn has been playing so heavily around them to facilitate that style. Now, we saw him experiment a little bit where he has been playing a little bit more towards Irrelevant, trying to help him out, especially we saw that in the XL game. But I'm curious to see if Mark Kuhn, especially with the way Reckless and Rooks have been performing, and you got this Lux Caitlyn on the opposite side, how often he's going to spend around this bot side. I mean, the two games that Mark Kuhn has played on Sejuani definitely felt impressive. And I think, importantly, felt like he was leading SK around the map. I think dictating the pace, the tempo, initiating for the squad was very, very crucial to how SK developed. The Azir will be locked in here for Humanoid after the Jax, the Silas, Gragas, and Kassadin were removed from the pool. So you've got that range ability, you've got the disengage tools, you've got some engage here for Fnatic. And now SK going to find an answer. Not blind into that top lane. And Certus, what does he want to run here? Yeah, that's where I'm really curious to see, because Again, kind of looking at how the mid lane matchup we're talking about goes, you want something that can match the push against the Azir, but Azir is kind of king in that regard, where it's so difficult to actually keep him in check. So I don't know exactly what Sirius wants to go to. I think Talia is a pretty good answer here, where you can at least match the roams and push out. So, uh, And especially when you're looking at a Wukong, a Leona, these are all champions that hate having to go over that Unraveled Earth. It just CCs them up and makes it so difficult to play against. And I'm very, very interested to see the performance here. So Sirius has got four games played all time on Talia, three of them are wins. This is DOS's first ever Lux at this level of play. And this is an organization and a team that is showing some development, but also showing some inefficiencies around playing around that bottom lane. Sometimes a little slow to move them and apply pressure around the rest of the map. We'll talk about that once we hit the rift. It's gonna be the Camille now locked in for Wanda. So zoom out. Talk to me about these two team compositions and how you anticipate the game's play out. Yeah, I, well, both teams essentially going for big team fighting squads, so I'm expecting a lot of focus towards these early objectives and specifically trying to get Exekick and DOS ahead for SK Gaming so the Caitlyn can be very relevant in this one. And then on the opposite side, I actually really like the Camille lock in here for Fnatic. One of the big problems that you're going to see is that Caitlyn, incredibly long range. Talia, very good at setting up these fights, so it's difficult for a lot of members to jump in. But wonder when you've got the Camille, can use that Hex Echo Ultimatum and lock down some of these key carries on the back line. So I'm going to be keeping my eyes on Wonder to see how he can come in on these flank situations. It's something he's very good at last split, and he needs to be able to do it here again. Also, that combination with that Wukong, with that Leona, the dive buddies are going to be terrifying. And you can kind of sidestep and move away from your carries a little. There is some self-peel available, both for that Azir and the Zaya. So execution going to be very important. I think both of these teams, we want to see how they set up for those objectives, set up for those team fights, because you can get punished very, very quickly if you're a little bit out of position, if you don't have the necessary vision. I think specifically for, uh, well, actually for both of these teams, a little bit still to see, to develop in terms of setting up for those visions and those objective fights later game. Yeah, I think for SK as well, for a squad that I think now we're starting to kind of look and go, okay, how high can you climb in the standings? It does start to come down to, okay, let's start to really analyze those objective setups. Let's find out as we hit the rift for SK versus Fnatic. Welcome to Summoner's Rift. The do or die match here for Fnatic. If they do drop this game, they are eliminated from groups. And that means SK still have a shot at the top two. And uh, of course, if Fnatic do win, we'll have that tiebreaker later. For now, Markoon with a little bit of backup, steps forward, places that ward down very early on. I think Markoon and Razork are two of the players that I definitely want to track, specifically Please around how this bottom lane plays out, how much push Exekick and DOS are comfortable with, and then what the answers are for Fnatic. Do they try to set up any gangs? Do they try, you know, pick them off? And that's why I love the ward coming in from SK here. You can already see the place in the red. They want to spot out where Razork is because they have the same question. What is Razork going to try and achieve? And one of the things you can try and do is go for some sort of early gank, blow summoner spells. Thank you, Rectus, for demonstrating. <laughs> as, uh, that's actually going to give a big win for extra kick and DOS now because it just makes this lane a little bit more unsafe if Mark Kuhn makes his way down. I mean, instant advantage here. And this is already going to be into a lane that's going to try to bully you for the first few moments. Fleet stepping up there for extra kick. 
going forward and Doss playing the angles, trying to get that secondary tag on the light binding. I'm looking at the minimap as well. It looks like Razork starting there on his blue side, whereas Markun starting on his red. And I like how Exekick and Doss are playing the wave at the moment. They're not trying to push, they're just trying to zone Reckless and Rooks off. Because one of the things that you can do as Razork, if you want to, is try and go for some sort of level two as the wave is pushing in. But Exekick and Doss are so slowly building this up that they're not really going to be overextended or a position to let Razork go for a play. And they know Razork started on this bot side because of that ward on the red buff. I mean, denying XP, denying the gold, is uh, almost as effective as just securing it all for yourself. I mean, look at this. Not a single CS picked up for Reckless. No Clint. He's pushed all the way under his tower. What it does mean, though, is Exekick and Doss need to ensure they have some sort of river vision, make sure that they don't stay past that river mark to allow either Humanoid, Rezork, somebody to gank. So Markun already made his way in, dropped that ward. Do you think they go for a level one tower dive here? This is very risky. Reckless will ward. I mean, you're still level one, but you have both flashes. Rux has CC. Oh, looking for Doss. Light binding available to him. Rux is going to be able to stay under the tower. Reckless has backed away, splitting up the lane. Markun now trying to farm between towers, oh, and there's no God. response. There's no reply from the rest of Fnatic. I mean, Razork is up on top side, so Reckless has just lost three massive waves to his own tower. Rux is the one actually picking these up. This is de this is desperate scenarios for uh, Fnatic. I mean, two plates almost secured. A couple more autos should just about do that. 23 CS to three, level three to level one. That is a gigantic advantage already for SK. And Razork was so late invading onto the opposite side as well that he's only really going to be able to pick up the blue buff. So Markun doesn't really lose out on too much. Look at that damage coming out. 90 caliber net will start to burn through Rux's HP. Ignite was dropped there by DOS. So now the level three support burnt out. He's got a couple of those team stabilizers available. But again, Fnatic being bullied, being beaten. But this is what you would have expected from the draw. Yeah, I mean, this bot lane's over. And again, I just love the way SK have been able to play around this bottom side. I mean, Exekick has been so damn good for them. Second highest DPM in the league, highest gold percent of any of the AD carries. Like, this guy has been so good when he gets these leads, and Mark Kuhn is just facilitating it so well. I mean, something else is the fact that all winter long, Reckless and Rux have not prioritized or even played these sort of meta bot laners. Now we're seeing this Zaya Leona being bullied by the Caitlyn Lux, and this must sting extra hard because Caitlyn is one of the most banned champions for Fnatic against anybody this season. Gets let through, gets picked up, and it's generated a 700 gold lead, generated a 20 CS advantage. And in the mid lane and the top lane, SK are also pressing into Fnatic. So those pushing lanes should, in theory, unlock some uh, moves here for Markun, who's now backing up Certus. Razor might be in trouble, though. Oh. Markun here. Well, it's going to use that decoy to safety for now. Markun, Arctic Assaults forward, and the Blast Cone will put some distance. And again, bullying. Razor could have gone bottom lane, could have come in behind the duo of SK not going to be allowed to. And that's the thing now. So if he even tries to go towards his Gromp, he doesn't have any guarantee that Sejuani isn't there. Even you can see the direction that Markun's looking, he's still trying to hover around this bot side and use the push that Exekick and Doss have. Even if he wants to, and I was actually going to say, he's going to just immediately go for it. Go for Dragon. You have that full push. Exekick and Doss move over. You get to clear that out. And Markun is playing this so well. I mean, he really is. Take a look at some of his stats um, throughout the course of winter. Third, as far as KDA is concerned, I think crucially 72% kill participation at 14. Very heavily involved in a lot of his team's plays. Um, marginally behind as far as the goal difference is concerned. But I think more importantly for me, when you look at how Markun positioned this game, how he moved around, backed up that Caitlyn Lux lane, it's just very heads up play, and it's something that Markun and SK demonstrated growth from week one to two to three. And I mean, for Markun as well, like it does feel like wherever he goes, SK will follow. And when you kind of look at this team, and there's so little veterancy on it, and Markun being the longest standing with only a year and a half tenure there, it it fell on him to try and step up and bear that mantle, and I think he's done a fantastic job understanding, hey, if we can get Exa Kick and Doss ahead across multiple games, we then can play these front-to-back style fights that SK have been doing so well. That's why they are threatening for that second place, if they can get this win and a little bit of luck later on today. Yeah, we'll need a little bit of support. Looking to exile to surprise Vitality for that to happen. But I do want to commend here, Fnatic, as far as their solo lanes are concerned, small advantages on the top half of the map means that that gold difference is just sitting at the 300 mark. Um, not gigantic, all things considered. Reckless still a level behind Exekick, who's returned to lane. 
Got that quiver. Uh, it is matched by Reckless, who is just returning to lane for now. And very interesting period of play as the wave is once again pushing. There's some defensive vision for SK, but Razork nearing six may have some opportunities uh, if they're able to get in behind Exekick and DOS. Yeah, I think the hardest part is when you look at the way Sertis is actually playing in this mid lane, because oftentimes what we're seeing is that the second we end up getting the, uh, sorry, hit the wrong button there. Second, we end up seeing them get level six. Sertis is just roaming on both sides, up towards top, leaning a little bit down towards the side lane. So you never actually know whether you're just going to be alone or whether Sertis can show up because he's just dipped into the fog of war. And using that, it's allowed Marcoon to clear this top side. Now he's back bot, and they're trying to threaten Fnatic as they get, try and get control over this river. I mean, Wonder and Humanoids teleports are on cooldown as well. So if Sertis were to use that Weaver's Wall, He's got a small window of opportunity. Irrelevance got that TP available to him. I mean, we haven't even looked at the Gnar and the Camille just yet this game. Frankly, just farm fest, uh, pretty even in terms of CS for now. But both of these champions are going to have a significant impact on the game as the map starts to open up, whether or not Wanda decides to look for targets on the back line or push the, the side waves. Irrelevance Gnar timing can also be gigantic. And going to be very crucial follow-up here for, you know, the Sejuani or the Lock CC. I also think for Relevant, he plays a very core part in trying to disrupt to the wombo combo essentially that is Fnatic of all these divers, right? If he can interrupt Reckless and Humanoid and stop them from following up, but then there's a chance that the rest of SK can actually deal with the likes of Wonder, you know, Marcoon trying to interrupt Razor getting onto the backside. Because if you end up in a position where Exekick gets caught out, then you start to cause problems for SK in the straight up front to back. But as long as SK are setting up their wards, being patient around these objectives, they should be okay. So far, pretty patient until the mid lane engage. Sirtis has jumped on Cyclone to death. First blood, Fnatic. And this is what Fnatic have been relying on so much at the moment, is trying to get Humanoid ahead, trying to see if he can get Humanoid playing like he did on his Azir at Worlds. Didn't end up working for them yesterday, but once more we'll have to see if Humanoid and Razor can play that mid jungle and get them that way. And I mean, because the Rift Herald was the focus there for Marcoon and Irrelevant, no support to speak of. Sirtis flashes late, gets taken down, and the kill secured by Razork. They stay within touching distance of gold, and that is very, very oh, cool. important. I do wish to keep highlighting the bottom lane. Nearly a thousand gold separating Reckless and Exekick. Well, oh, there may be some pressure top here as uh, Marcoon seems to be stealing away this red buff. Razork should be able to get in there maybe just as a lot of seconds, maybe not. He's taking a little longer to clear out these chickens. So stealing away the buff, yeah, another advantage to Marcoon. And he has the Rift Herald as well. So I actually like this call from Marcoon where he's like, okay, I can use the fact that we have this pressure on top side. We know that Razork has used his ultimate. I'm just going to invade because I don't have to worry about Razork trying to make the play on bot side because they just made a play on Sertis. But I mean, just really nice job from Humanoid and Razork here. Humanoid getting a great sweep. Just catches Sertis off his feet. I mean, watching that in replay, I wonder if Sertis thought that it wasn't going to connect, wasn't going to hit, because that was so close. That's the engage. All in onto DOS. Forced to flash for his life. He's taken out the feathers flying from Reckless. He touches the 90 caliber, but not the headshot. It's a one for one in the bot lane. Great job by Exekick to step past Rooks, land that net, and get the shot on Reckless just as he flashed away. So support for AD Carry. You'll take that as SK, and they get to push in, probably take this last turret now. So you don't even have to put the Rift Herald bot. You can now use that when you rotate Exekick and DOS around the map. I mean, both AD carries picking up those kills, crucially, straight up 2v2. Rux finds the engage, finds the CC, and finds the kill. But that tower, very, very low. And we're talking about during draft, when we do look at Exekick and DOS playing the Lucian Nami and looking at those, those sort of uh, duos that you want to move around the map and use their power spikes early on, this is a duo that we have to judge. How do SK do it? Where do they go? And how much pressure can they apply? Because like you mentioned, the ref channel is still available and then the mid and the top lane for the time being pretty even Stevens for both teams. Yeah, and I think one of the big things that we've seen with the Lucian, I mean, especially when we saw them against Astralis, was great mid game where they were, oh, hang on. Glacier Prison goes all the way forward, knocked backwards, and another easy pickup. I literally was taking a sip of water <laughs> as Humanoid just got destroyed from the layered CC. Gale Force oh as well God. as the Flash and Exekick solo kills Reckless. I mean, this bot lane is getting real ugly for Fnatic. Reckless now going down two deaths as well, 30 CS lead. Plus the fact as well, don't, like, you're still two levels behind because of that early play as well. So this is Exekick putting his mark on the bot side. Second Dragon going over to SK again. I mean, just 
playing so well off this bot lane advantage. It's going to be very, very difficult to find an answer to this Caitlyn. Uh, 11 minutes in, Mythic completed. Second Dragon just about secured. The Marcoon's going to be able to dash over the wall, blues the flash as well. And Fnatic now starting to fall further behind. That gold difference complicated by the early dragon pickups as well. Yeah, also just the early gale force for the Caitlyn is what we're going to see in this play, right? Reckless kind of getting caught off guard by it, where Exekick takes the shot, knows that he has the seen people in that river in mid, just coming off of mid lane, so has a little bit of time, gets the gale force forward, instant cleanse. Because the flash was already burnt, he's able to follow up with his own. I mean, beautifully done. That keeps SK still in the lead. But again, do not discount the advantage that has been picked up in that middle lane for Humanoid. Kill advantage, the CS advantage. There's a plate or two picked up here in the bottom lane. And we are starting to see some movement. Irrelevant being placed in the bottom. Duo, with the help of the Rift Herald, thrown up top. So if they're able to shove this quickly, might be able to get that charge, maybe for some more plates. I am surprised that we're already getting the rotate. I thought they'd commit for the bot lane tower before this and then rotate, but Rift Tower was just about to time out. So instead, they're just going to use this to get Exekick even further ahead. Lots of Fnatic members here, though. Fnatic wants to fight. Three seconds for the Glacial Prison. The Emperor's Divide sends Markun flying backwards. The Ultimate's not even fired. Markun doesn't get a shot. Exekick 90 calibers backwards. The final spark just flashed away from. And here comes Surtis threading those volleys one after the other. Rux is being burned down, but they survived. It's the kill secure to Fnatic. It's still the bot terror, though, going to go across to the NAR. Plates going across towards SK. Fnatic need to try and push for more if they want to make this trade even, but can't quite get onto SK. They can't just yet. SK still sticking around. Tower advantage gives them a small gold lead as well. But this game is still very close as far as the metrics are concerned. And you can see how this dive combination from Fnatic can work to kill the members of SK. Yeah, it's Humanoid who's been consistently starting these off, though. He's been so good, and actually I've been surprised to see how often he is willing to put himself in harm's way so Fnatic can find that success. We saw it again at the start of this, where he's the one going in. It's not the Wukong, it's not anyone else. It's Humanoid who says, I'm going, you better follow. And it ends up getting Marcoon off the back of this, where Razark once more gets the easy setup for the ultimate. And even though Certus was waiting in the wings, they're Fnatic just about able to kite this one out so they survive and don't give one back home. So many flashes used, and of course, if another fight happens in the next few minutes, that could have gone differently. That final spark dodged away from. Almost like another dr dragon fight or something that's happening in two and a half minutes, where now you have no flashes. This is where I think SK can actually punish the fact that Fnatic did invest so much on that play, because Fnatic need to try and fight for this next dragon. Under the assumption that crowd control doesn't instantly get laid, and you're blown up before it starts. Here in the middle lane, Humanoids just dinged 11, six seconds to go on the Emperor's Divide. With two minutes to Dragon, you can see multiple members of Fnatic at least pushing towards this middle lane, trying to get some control. Not the deepest vision. Certus again just being bullied away, and it doesn't look like they're going to be in time. Actually, I take that back. 5,000 HP on the Rift Herald. Fnatic, they fancy a fight. They're not going to wait for that Dragon. No, they're trying to see if they can burn the TP off of Nar. Wonder had a good push on bot side. This will now reset, though. Camille in mid. It's four versus five. It looks, I think, like SK. Just give it up. You want to keep that TP for the Dragon. That's your big next fight. Don't put yourself in a choke that you can get crowd control to death. So this will allow Fnatic to get some of that standing gold. And just while we have a brief moment, just a quick reminder here, Fnatic playing for their lives. In the event they lose this game, they will not advance past the regular season. And when we look at their all-time worst performances, 2016 Spring 6th, 2021 5th, 21 5th as well, this would be a shocking surprise and turn. Even if they win the game, looking at that 8th seed, it is still their worst regular season performance in many, many, many years. I mean, the fact that Fnatic is sitting on the verge of, for the first time ever, not making it to the bracket stage, that is an incredible statement to stay. And it's heartbreaking to see, because, I mean, Fnatic is filled to the brim with talent. But, I mean, the last time we really saw Fnatic you know, pop off was back in 2018, last time they were able to win it. And unfortunately, the squad just hasn't been able to find that win, that the, the identity that they needed to kind of bear themselves forward through the rest of the tournament. The one thing I do like about this game, they're very clearly willing to fight. They are very clearly stepping into SK. And with this uh, Dragon being up at 30, <laughs> they now have to try and mitigate that burst damage. Humanoid's gone low. Teleport will be up for him in just a little while. 
But in this case, shoving the mid lane, 15 seconds on the Dragon. All five members are grouped. The big thing for Fnatic, though, is their composition that relies on getting multiple attack angles. Wonder coming in from one way, Razark on another, and this river is blind for them. SK have done a great job of clearing out all the wards, so as long as Exekick doesn't get caught here, they should be fine, but I think Fnatic might just try and trade it for mid-turns. Well, we're going to find out. The Weavers have all been used to disconnect Wonder from the rest of the team. The Rift Herald was dropped in the middle lane. Markoon takes some damage there from Humanoid, and the charge almost takes out the tower. This will allow Fnatic into the river. The thing was, Sertis used that Weaver's Wall to try and keep Fnatic out of the river, so that's not up and available. Irrelevant has his Mega Nard that's been popped as well. A lot of these key abilities that SK are relying on have been baited out by Fnatic. The timing window is starting to shrink. Irrelevant will go Mini Nard. He's a tired little boy for now. Waiting for that solar flare, or waiting for the Emperor's Divide. The prison tags on Humanoid, but he's able to escape with the slide and glide. The two-man pushback from Certus is great. Exekick flies forward, sets up one, gets a second. Two kills to SK, and with the feathers flying, they simply do not do enough. And SK turned for Dragon. Humanoid didn't manage to flash away, and the rest of Fnatic had to jump in to try and save the bird, but it means that SK will get the Dragon. They'll secure a third one, and for Fnatic's chances are slipping away again. I mean, Markoon threading the needle. That glacial prison just tagging Humanoid as it looked to me like it may have missed. And it was Humanoid trying to go forward to get some damage onto Exekick, but I mean, Markoon, great job there. Humanoid not respecting that it could hit, doesn't flash away. And that ends up baiting Rooks and Razork to go in, but great talks back by Certus, and Exekick knows at that stage there's nothing left in the tank that he has to worry about, unless Wonder wants to try and commit himself to that as well, going way too far forward. So SK pick up the nice team fight win, and it's only a 1k goal difference, but you can feel the pressure that Fnatic are under. And also, it's how the fights actually play out. Once Fnatic either position or look for that initiation, the fact that SK are able to thwart or get away from some of that burst damage, Exekix using that Gale Force forward. He's running into the members of Fnatic as Irrelevant now forced to flash after using the Gnar. He gets away with his life, and as Fnatic trying to take this bomb tower, the first that they're looking for in the game. Immediately, SK respond, though. They go towards mid. They know there's too many members of Fnatic committed to the bot side. So, again, that's going to be the last outer terror down now for SK. And with a Caitlyn, you can see jump with Zertis. That's terrifying. Oh, look at this. The flash, the slide, the glide, and Humanoid is taken down. Four members of SK throw everything at him. They get the tower, they get the kill, and they've got an extended gold lead. It is SK in control, and that window, the opportunity to come back, is getting smaller and smaller here for Fnatic. The swoop, the boop, and the oops from Humanoid, where he really didn't want to be in that position. Seratus with a great flank, kind of predicting where Humanoid was going to be moving to. And this is what we were kind of saying. If Exekick gets to set up in a lane, Oh, wonder actually. No, he'd be fine. Set up with those uh, those traps. You got Sertus, who's able to have vision on both sides. He's able to put down a perfect unraveled earth. It becomes very, very difficult for Natic when they fall behind to actually find good fights, good flanks, so they can bring this game back. I mean, let's look at the vision then. Um, three wow. minutes until the next dragon. We can see irrelevant. The focus as Wonder and Resort try to chase him down. Hextech ultimatum locks him in place, and this should be a fairly easy kill as they continue to chase. That hook shot will slow him down. There's nothing else to play for. The fans in Berlin cheering. It's the fourth kill secured, but it is a small uh, step towards closing this gap. I think the next dragon or the Baron is going to have to be where Fnatic find that team fight. They cannot be outplayed. But it's so difficult to. I mean, Exekick, he's going to be super far ahead. Already 1.2k gold. You can see he's going to be working towards Infinity Edge as well. Seratus should hit his second item. Also, the fact that he still has that stopwatch in his back pocket makes him very difficult as a target and irrelevant. He's been... If he has it, he should have his flash back up just after that the dragon fight comes up. So in theory, if he can get a good Mega Nar, he should be in a good spot. All right, is it fair to say the next big team fight could decide Fnatic's fate? Um, with two minutes yeah. with the Mountain Soul, it's starting to feel that way. I mean, it just feels like this dragon is everything right now, especially as we talked about, you know, the dive composition and Mountain Soul against that is so good at keeping Fnatic at bay. And unfortunately, they just haven't had time to scale up, right? You still want a third item realistically on Reckless. Same when you look towards uh, Humanoid, who 
has been trying his damnedest to push forward, get the damage that he needs to carry these fights, even just get a little bit of poke off, but it just has not been enough against SK. And this is now comfort zone for SK, where they can play nice and slow, play towards objective fights, and not really put themselves in harm's way. Yeah, and even though the advantage seems relatively minor, it's just the way that the game has played out, that it's SK that's landing the bigger punches, SK moving around the map uh, a little bit better. And I know if you were listening to the previous cast, you might have heard about the original El Clasico, Fnatic SK, coming from years and years and years of competition between these orgs. But for SK, it's been a long time since they were near the top of the table in the regular season, 2013, 2015, 2014. Back in the day, SK and Fnatic is expected to be finals. And here we are today, SK looking at knocking Fnatic out. Actually, looking at knocking all the British orgs out, they're channeling their inner Boris Johnson. They took down XL yesterday. They could take down Fnatic today. Yeah, well, I actually got some crews in the crowd know, there. That would be great, but uh, I mean, we're going to have to see if they can, because right now they're trying to set up that divide line, make sure that they're good. As well, it's the pick being started here, but who's got caught down? It's a kick. He's down. He's down, and Berlin goes wild. The shutdown goal secured. Final spot flies across. Resort, the target. No, backwards, and Arabin gets the kill. Rux engages with that Zenith blade, but is instantly locked in place by Marcoon's flails. Humanoid chucking out those sand soldiers and ends up being one for two. Zeratus is huge right now as well and Humanoid wants to see what he can do, still has that ultimate available but trying to play keep away from SK at the moment. No jungler, no top laner for Fnatic. Dragon is up in 10 seconds. Does SK risk it? Do they start it instead? Waiting in the bush for now, trying to catch another member of Fnatic. This could be risky, and they've started off, Dagda. I mean, it was so close to being good. SK leave X to kick on an island in that mid lane to clear out waves, and I mean, Fnatic get the pick, but SK respond, they'll get the dragon. You can't start up Baron with the way Fnatic are at the moment, so SK find the soul. Well, while they play on that soul, take a look at this. XK gets blown up, but the re-engage and the damage from the rest of SK ends up meaning they win the fight. And this is what I was saying about Wonder going for the Camille. This is why Camille is so valuable for these long-range carries, because you can lock down them so easily, but the rest of Fnatic try to follow up, but SK are in such a good position, irrelevant with the TP in. I actually like that he screwed people away, because if I space them for Seratus, it resets the fight a little bit, and then just massive wallop sets up again for Seratus to be the core carry for that fight. I mean, so little damage onto Sirtis and Marcoon once irrelevant was pushed away. The soul is secured. What does the mountain soul mean uh, within the context of the draft? We may not be able to discuss that because SK are on the Baron already. Teleport is available for Wonder. He may need to pull that trigger. And that's what they're trying to do. Get that TP off of Wonder so then they don't have to play through side lanes. But Fnatic may not even get here in time. They might not. Yesterday, Marcoon helped eliminate XL with a Baron Steel. Can he secure the Baron? Secure the win? And look to eliminate Fnatic. Glacial Prison. The wall thrown out. The final spark. Razork will be taken down. Sir Ivan's is actually killed inside the pit though. Finally, Baron goes down. Irrelevant loses his life, but all the distraction meant that SK get the Baron, and while that's going on, Reckless shoving in that middle lane. And Wonder as well. Both inner towers in mid and bot were taken, but I think it's a win for SK. They should be able to shove out these waves and then come back to that siege we were talking about with the Talia, with the Caitlyn. Make sure that you end up pushing Fnatic. They have to stay underneath their own turn. I mean, you could feel the, 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 the chaos within this fight trying to keep Fnatic out, trying to find those kills, but also a little bit of split focus on that Baron damage. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely several calls going on where SK were like, right, Sarah just get the wall down, so we have to make sure that Razor can't get in. But once Razor committed with that ultimate, they knew that they were fine to just finish this off. Exekick as well can kind of sit at the back of the wall playing safe while he's able to deal damage over it. So overall, good call from SK. And you kind of tell Fnatic were kind of half-heartedly trying to contest. Realistically, they just wanted to try and trade both those towers, knowing they were too late towards the objective. I mean, playing into the soul, playing into Baron, SK have got all the tools they need to suffocate Fnatic on the map, but don't forget, if they group up the engage options and the dive power with an even gold composition, the fact that Reckless, three items completed, Exekick, three items completed, that early advantage is basically nullified as far as combat power. And I was about to say for Rec, ooh, hang on. Well, there's the engage onto Irrelevant, Flash is available, needs to gnaw out by some time, holding on to it. That may be important for a future fight as Wanda will hook shot forward. Gets walloped in the face. Humanoid sends those sand soldiers forward and the prison locks up Wanda. Do 
just gets the kill. Humanoid's the next target as here comes Sirtis riding the wall forward. Not gonna be able to chase anymore, but they punish. They get another kill. And Sirtis wants to go for more Humanoid. That's the flash for the third volley, not at the right angle. Not gonna be able to send Humanoid back, but here comes Irrelevant. He's TP to the top lane. Mokuz cut off the retreat. Humanoid's getting burst down and chunked out. Dots gets another. Razok locked in place the clone rather as he's able to decoy the safety with Baron empowered minions. 40 second death timer on Humanoid. SK are looking to open up the base. Every fight, SK are finding two members of Fnatic and if SK want to find themselves in that second place if Vitality end up losing later. SK are looking so damn good this SK place. Wanna, they want to knock out Fnatic. They want to eliminate Fnatic right now. Inhibitor is secured. They've got themselves 20% uh, of that Baron timer remaining. And they've got control of the rift with two minutes until Elder. That's the only thing that you cannot concede now if you are SK gaming. I actually think it's a bad idea to try and go for it in a lot of situations, because as you say, a dive composition, if they end up getting even a whiff at that, it can go so terribly so quickly. I think if you are SK, you don't want to make sure the Fnatic don't ever get a chance to answer for that. So stick a relevant mid, have him continuously push in that wave, Use then uh, Sertis and Exekick on this bot side to threaten that inner terror, push Fnatic back, and once they're firmly in their own base, then you can actually start to turn back towards the Elder Dragon. But if SK try to play this rushed, that is the answer for Fnatic to get back into this game. I feel like they've been pretty controlled for the 30 minutes of gameplay here. Fairly calculated across the movements, I think looking at the itemization, uh, what time is it, Dagda? It's three stopwatches for SK. Those could be pivotal in another team fight, especially against the engaged tools of Fnatic. This is the area where, though, for Fnatic, Ooh. they do have decent enough wave clear with Humanoid and Reckless. So you really need to be spreading out here as SK. This is something that they actually failed to do against Astralis. That gave Astralis that time back into the game. So for SK, this is what I like. Them pushing sides, making sure they're putting as much pressure on the map as they can right now. And look at the traps being set up. Reducing the amount of angles that Fnatic can engage from. Super minions being dealt with in the middle lane. The Marcoon holding on to that prison. The Weaver's Wall will buy enough time to take down the tower. Emperor's Divide is available for Humanoid. No flash. Glacial Prison locks him up. The dive forward. They've got him. Humanoid's down. Rosork is running for his life. Cyclone and Flash is available, but it's a five versus four. Members of SK burning down this Nexus turret. Wonder had to TP back, and SK, they're still in a great position. They just get to use this range. No one really here can set up for the plays now. And SK, they have super minions streaming in everywhere. That's the engage from Rosork. The first stopwatch used by Exekick. He's got the Knights of Caliber Nets and the Flash used to get away. Razork is locked in place, taken out at the cost of Marcoon's life. Now Wonder running himself as irrelevant, is chucking out the damage. The CC lands, and despite the massive recall from the Feathers, Reckless cannot stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Exekick. Fnatic cannot stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with SK Gaming. And Fnatic are eliminated at the hands of SK. Fnatic for the first time in the organization's history, will fail to make it to the bracket stage. But SK, that was an incredible performance from them, from a team that from week one, a lot of people doubted. When you saw that maybe things weren't coming together in that bot lane, maybe that synergy wasn't there, but bit by bit, it's come together. And now they are sitting with a chance to look for that second place finish. I cannot wait to see how this team performs in the best of threes. The development and growth over three weeks of games is clear, it's visible. And I think in this, this game in particular, the patience on display is something that I don't think I've seen a lot of over the last few uh, weeks, but it was part of the reason. They had something to, to aim for, they've got that goal at the top, and they executed well. Yeah, I think the, the big takeaway for me was kind of seen again, well, obviously, bot lane can play very well, right? But it's when it gets to how they manage waves in the mid game, how they try and set up for these sieges. I think there was still some hiccups you can kind of see where it's like not really setting up like irrelevant to push in one wave, right? But this is something now they get the chance to work on coming into the best of three, something that they can actually look to try and continue forward as they go on throughout the rest of the tournament. I mean, for SK Gaming, 
First in the regular season in spring 2014. First in the regular season in 2015 spring and third in 2013. It's been that many years since they were at the top of the table. And I think the interesting one is that they guaranteed top four anyway, right? Which I think is absolutely incredible for especially so many new players. Like this roster doesn't have that veterancy yeah. really there to lead them. But for Mark Kuhn to step up, to see the way Exekick and Doss have, I mean, put on a show coming into the LEC, this is a team that's not only worth watching now, but for years to come. Yeah, definitely. See what happens next week when they play those BO3s. Uh, the Player of the Game nominees were on your screen just a second ago, at LEC on Twitter. Mark Kuhn, Exekick and Doss. This was a phenomenal team performance here from SK and they eliminate Fnatic. Very interesting turn of events. This does mean as well that Astralis are now guaranteed to advance to the group stage. We've got two more games still to play. It'll be all about seeding. Before we get to that, though, we're going to sit on stage with DOS. Thank you very much, Trevor and DOS. Thank you so much for joining me. Your first time on this stage, if I'm not wrong. And your first competitive Lux game. Why now? Uh, honestly, I think... We should have played like more than uh, just Yumi. Like I played four games Yumi so far, I think. And Are you sick of it? I'm actually sick of it, uh, yeah. Okay. But I think it's like going to be the last patch of Yumi or something like this. So it's fine, honestly. But uh, they blind pick Sire, which is like not too normal, right? So I think you just pick something that outrange to Sire. Like if you play something that goes on to Sire, then it's obviously a lot harder to play. So I think this game was the freest k Lux game. Now, of course, for SK Gaming 2022, was not the happiest year as an org in the LEC. And of course, you joined the team over in 2023. People didn't have a lot of expectations. The team is full of rookies as well. How have you integrated in the roster and how do you see the team? I think actually almost it's a benefit to join like a first LEC team or it's like not my first LEC team, but to join an organization where the expectations are not too high. Mm -hmm. Because I think joining like an organization like Fnatic, for example, the pressure is on you and you're like there to perform, right? I think we didn't really have like too much pressure on us and I think it's like a lot easier for us to just like improve slowly and work on the basics, right? Absolutely. And of course, Leo Betty told me that you were the last piece in the SK puzzle as well. Does that put any pressure on you to perform even better? I'm not going to lie. My off season was a bit rough. Uh, I do believe that I should have gotten more attention than what I got. Um, but obviously there was things that made it hard for organizations to believe in me. But I think it doesn't matter if I joined the first or the last, like we are in it together in this case. So we are just playing as a team. Do you think you're proving yourself now that you've made it here? I think I'm slowly getting there, but I don't want to get cocky too early. So I'm just taking it one game at a time and obviously People predicted us to do not so well, but I do believe that we can make it to Worlds this year, and that's my main goal. Okay, sky's the limit, Dos. I love that. Uh, straight into Worlds with your boy Exekick. You guys played together last year of an LDLC. How has it been reuniting with him on that stage? Actually, that's a good question. I think uh, last year we had like completely different play style. We played more like a supportive role to the team. We are like the team that just play kind of weak side, if you would say. But now we are like turning into more of like carry players. Yeah. And obviously like since it's range meta now on bot lane, then we need to like adapt to that. And I think we did a really good job on like adapting to that meta because last year that was a bit of a struggle, especially for me. Uh, but yeah, obviously I love playing with my boy Exekick and we'll see what we can do. You guys have taken down some insane veteran bot lanes and it can only get better from here. Thank you so much, Dos, for joining me. And after the break, we'll continue with the fight for top two between Mad Lions and G2. But first, let's listen to the Warner song of the week, Love Me Like You Do by DTE. We'll be back after this.